Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Soul Monade Show with Sonia. We are so thrilled that you have chosen to tune in and join us today. We have a fantastic show. Line. We have Tom Ratchford on here, and we talk about all of his great accomplishments in film for the last 40 years. As you can see over my right shoulder, we are in a church today. We are at New Hope Assembly in Urbandale, Iowa, on location for a special event that is taking place. Thanks for tuning in here at the Soul Monade Show with Sonia. We hope that you've all had just a fantastic week. We're wrapping up the summer of course we have this other heat wave that's coming through here but you know what they're, what they're saying in the farmer's almanac y'all need to get ready because we are about to have the coldest winter quite possibly in history that's what they're saying i'm telling you so get out the parka get out the galoshes because we're going to get it hit hard in this country in the coming weeks we have cindy watson who is master makeup artist to the stars uh worked with her many years ago in seattle she trained me personally we're going to have fran mccaffrey right here on the Soul Monade Show with Sonia. I'll tell you all a little something. He was my husband's coach in college at Lehigh University back in the day. So uh, they were, were reunited here when coach came over and began to coach the Hawkeyes. And we're going to see if we can get him over here to Des Moines and get him on the show. Uh, we also have Robert Richardelli, dear friend. He's been a guest on Soul Monade. He is a life coach. And of course, we're going to have Rhonda Bermond. Rhonda Bermond, a dear friend, breast cancer survivor, very savvy businesswoman. She's been a guest on the show in years past. And She's back. She's stronger than ever. She's using phenomenal uh, products and supplements. You recall we did a, a segment on her as a breast cancer survivor. She's quite knowledgeable about health and uh, nutrition. She's going to share great tips for each and every one of us, male and female. We'll get her back in the studio, pick her brain a little bit. And uh, so you don't want to miss that show. We have a fantastic lineup and many more to come. So continue to tune in right here on ABC5 every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. So we're just going to take a few moments to hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back with our guest today, Tom Ratchford. We'll be right back, y'all. Hey everybody, welcome back from the break. We have Tom Ratchford with us as promised. So uh, without any further delay, let's just go ahead and pick his brain a little bit and see what we can find out about Tom Ratchford. Tom, welcome to the Soul Monade Show with Sonia. Well, thank you, Sonia. I'm so pleased to be here. This is, yes. a, this is a great opportunity, but you scare me when you say pick my brain. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't got too much left to be picked, so. Oh, you you have plenty, you have plenty. So Tom, you are here in the Des Moines area and uh, you used to live in Des Moines, didn't you? I used to live in Des Moines, yes. I lived in Des Moines in the early 70s and uh, worked for a company here called uh, Heartland Cinema, which had a series of movie theaters and I was a manager of a movie theater and then I became the advertising director and worked in booking and buying films. Mm -hmm. It was a great time. I love Des Moines. It's a great city to be in and be from. Although, I, I went to see somebody today and I got lost on the way. I thought, oh yeah, I can do this. I can, this is easy. But I got lost. Changed a little bit over the years, hasn't it? It's grown considerably, especially when you get to the outlying communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Downtown hasn't changed a whole lot, mm -hmm. but outlying areas have changed considerably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the suburbs are booming, uh, definitely out there in Grimes and Johnston for yes. sure. Mm -hmm. So Tom, you are a filmmaker in Los Angeles. You are an actor, you are married, and you have been in the industry now for 40 years, is that correct? I, boy, you got it all, absolutely correct on all of those things. Yes, uh, actually, A Thief in the Night was the, the first, uh, actually it was the second thing that I did. First mm -hmm. thing I did was a television show called Theater Beat in Los Angeles, and that was in 69. Mm -hmm. And then we moved to Des Moines, and I was here and was fortunate that the Lord allowed me to be in A Thief in the Night. Mm -hmm. And at that point, uh, I tried to be working in the film industry ever since then. Mm -hmm. Yes, quite fortunate. My goodness, you know, the, the jobs can be a little bit scarce at times, and every time I talk to you, you're on your way to a shoot or wrapping a film or... <laughs> Well, it, it sounds good. It's not always like that. Like any, like any industry and, and many people, you go through different phases. So I've had times when things were really rolling pretty well, and I've had other times when I said to myself, nobody's ever going to hire me to work again because this is just it. Or I say to my wife, I haven't had an audition or an interview in so long. So what's happening here? But she's very supportive. and. Uh, the Lord really has provided all kinds of things for me. 
not just work, but allowing me to go places that I would never have gone on my own, mm -hmm. to meet people that I've never would have met on my own, sure. and to have all kinds of wonderful experiences. Uh, for example, some years ago, I, I was hired by the English Language Institute mm -hmm. of China to, to make their, uh, their training and um, uh, video to encourage people to participate with mm -hmm. their group. And so they took me to mainland China to film. What year was this? Um, 80, I'm going to say 86, 87, mm -hmm. right around there. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, our relations with China were not quite as cordial as they are now. Yes. And so it was, a, it was a real experience going to China and meeting Chinese people. And I got to do things that people didn't get to do. For example, some people invited me to their home for dinner one night mm -hmm. with an interpreter. Mm -hmm. And we had fungus soup. <laughs> we had... Uh, we had some reeds from the river, mm -hmm. and I had seen people doing lots of other things in the river where those reeds were earlier in the day. And I, I said, when I saw the reeds, I said, are these from the river? And they said, oh, yes, they're from the river. <laughs> and I said, right by the bridge? And they said, yes, right by the bridge. I had seen some people there using the river for another function. But then they, they, they said, but we have something special. Mm -hmm. We have chicken tonight. Mm -hmm. My interpreter said, they don't normally have chicken. Oh. It's, it's pretty fancy stuff for them. Uh -huh. And they said, we're bringing chicken for you. Uh -huh. I said, great. So they brought out the chicken. Uh -huh. In mainland China in those days, they didn't cut chickens like we do where you cut the wings off and the legs right. off and stuff. They took a chopping block and they chopped it in squares. Uh -huh. And so that was the chicken. You got a piece of chicken that had bone and meat and skin and whatever else happened to be in that square. The feathers as well? Uh, no, it, they did take the feathers They off. did pluck them, okay. However, <laughs> they brought the chicken head out intact ah, on display they, no 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 oh. and they said this is a special treat for you for you yes i turned to my interpreter under my breath and i said they expect me to eat this and he said yes it's mm -hmm. a great delicacy mm -hmm. i said i can't i can't i'm sorry but i i'm afraid i wouldn't keep anything down if i ate that what can i do to get out of this mm -hmm. he said you see the older man at the end of the table he's the grandfather mm -hmm. offer it to him so, oh, a wise man. So I said, thank you, this is a great honor, but I, I believe that the grandfather should have the honor. Mm -hmm. And so I passed the chicken head there down to him, and he ate it. <laughs> he took his chopsticks and plucked the eyes out and ate them first. <laughs> I was so glad that I didn't say, yeah, I can eat that. But I've had experiences like that all over the world, India, South America, Europe, hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. uh, things that I never would have gotten to do if I had an eight to a nine to five job right. and doing some other things. Now, after you shot uh, A Thief in the Night uh, here with in Des Moines with uh, uh, Russ, Russ Doughton. Russ Doughton and Don Thompson is the director, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about the Thief in the Night and, and all the events that are taking place here in town. But afterwards, you, uh, you founded a, a ministry, Mustard Seed International. Can you talk with us a little bit about yes. that? Yes. Russell was actually the founder of that. In 1973, uh, we actually premiered A Thief in the Night here. Mm -hmm. And we, at that point, uh, it took off tremendously. We went to Hoyt Sherman Auditorium to show it. The very first day that we went, uh, we had publicized it extensively throughout the city. The very first day, an hour before the first showing, the theater was already full and there was a line out around the block. And, and we said, what do we do now? What do we do? We've got an hour yet and we've already got people here and people waiting. And uh, wisely we were told, go ahead and start the movie. You already got a full house and you can get these in and the people outside won't have to wait nearly as long. So we did, but we had unusual, unusual crowds there. And as at that, at that showing, we had decided ahead of time that when people saw the movie, we needed to have someone there that they could talk to. If they said, yes, I'd like to receive Christ, or I'd like to rededicate my life, or I saw things in this movie that I've never learned about in my church, or I never thought about before, I'd like to talk to somebody. So we said, let's have some counselors to do this. And then Russell said, you know, if this movie is this popular here, we need to put it not only all over the country, we need to take it all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that was how Mustard Seed International was founded. Mm -hmm. It was founded to make language translations and distribute that film and any other films that came after that all around the world. 
And today, Mustard Seed has made translations in English and Spanish and Portuguese and uh, Korean, uh, Chinese, Mandarin Chinese. Uh, and it's subtitled in many languages in Europe, Dutch mm -hmm. and French German and Swedish and, and German and Finnish and so on. Oh, there is one film that actually has a lip sync German translation. Really? Not A Thief in the Night, but one of the other films that uh -huh. we did. Huh. But that's how uh, Mustard Seed International was born. And it still distributes films around the world, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Brazil and South Africa and Europe and so on. And we also developed a Share Your Faith seminar, which is a training program for the average person in an average church who sits in the pew and says, I'd like to help lead somebody to Christ, but I, I don't know how to do it. Or I don't. I probably should use Bible scripture, but I, I can't remember scripture well enough, and I'm afraid I'd say something wrong, and then and there we go. <laughs> so we said, good, here's what we'll do. Let's develop a simple way to do it, and we'll teach people how to mark a Bible so that they can go, oh, I say this on this page, and then at the bottom of it says to go to page uh, 304, and you turn to page 304, and mm -hmm. then it says, oh, yeah, so that you can help people through, and then let's train them in what our responsibility is as witnesses mm -hmm. and what the Holy Spirit's responsibility is in taking their heart and moving their heart to, mm -hmm. to Christ. Mm -hmm. So we developed that. Sounds that very effective. Bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we actually have taught that all over the world. We taught it in India, we taught it in Ireland, and taught it all over this country. So many people all around the world are familiar with Mustard Seed International, aren't they, Tom? Many of them are, and many of them know A Thief in the Night. Mm -hmm. uh, Interestingly enough, I, we went to India, we got off the plane, and one of the guys who was standing there waiting for people to get off the plane in India looked at me, and uh, I had a mustache like I had in the, the movie at that point, and he looked at me and he said, I know you, I know you, you're the bad guy. And uh, it's, it's surprising, but um, that, that film in particular, the whole series, has b been so effective and effect mm -hmm. and. Uh, brought so many people to the Lord and made dramatic changes in their life that they are very attached to the characters and the story and sure. the events that happened. Sure, sure, understandably. Well, Tom, we're going to go ahead and, and just take a break here sure. for just a moment. We're going to hear a word from our sponsors. And uh, when we come back, let's talk a, a little bit more in detail about A Thief in the Night and this series that you keep referring to. Okay. So y'all don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all, welcome back from the break. So we're sitting here with Tom uh, Ratchford talking to him about his great film, A Thief in the Night. And here I have the DVD right here in front of me. Dave, if you can get a good look at this. A Thief in the Night. This film was shot right here in Iowa 40 years ago. It uh, launched at the Hoyt Sherman Center in 1973. Here it is at 2013, celebrating the 40th anniversary. And we have a series of events that are taking place across the state. We have churches and organizations who have stepped up, uh, such as this church right here in Urbandale, uh, to, to show the film. Uh, they're allowing uh, folks to come in. They can watch the, the film for free. They can uh, talk with some of the former cast members, like, like Tom and some others. And uh, it's just been very exciting. We have several more that are coming up. We will have a showing at the Floor Cinema over there on Floor Drive in Des Moines at 1 o'clock p.m. You can return or bring your friends back the following day at the Floor Cinema at 11 o'clock a.m. at the Floor again. And then Saturday evening, Tom, we are going to be over West there Moines at West Des Moines Open Bible Church at 6.30 p.m. Is that correct? I think that sounds about right. Is. Mm-hmm. And then our fundraiser, because there is another film that will be shot. It'll be shot right here in Iowa. Don't know what the title is. Don't even have all of the content. Oh, it's a secret. Yes. <laughs> but we have a fundraiser that will be taking place at the Gertz House there in Grimes. So if you'd like more information, you can go ahead and, and contact here at uh, contact us here at Solmanad at Sonia at Solmanad.com. And we'll be more than happy to pass that information on to you. We'll also have it on our website. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see www.solmanad.com. We'll go ahead and have that information there for you as well. So, Tom, yes. we don't have much time in this last segment. Please okay. talk to me some more about the film and this series that you keep referring to. Okay. Um, a Thief in the Night was conceived by Russ Doughton and Don Thompson, and they used to come to the office every day, and they would sit in prayer 
before they wrote. Mm -hmm. That, I believe, is the key to this film and its success, as well as the three films that come in succession after this. Mm -hmm. Now, the, all four films together are standalone films, mm -hmm. but each one picks up where the previous one left off, uh -huh. and whatever characters are still alive mm -hmm. are continued on. Sure. But these guys anointed this film in prayer every step of the way. While we were doing it, I said, this is a, this is a good film. It's not a bad film. It's a good film. When it was done and I saw it for the first time, I said, this is a better film than we made mm -hmm. because the Holy Spirit was involved in it. And this is you right here on the cover? That's me on the cover. And that's Patty. Mustache. Yes, <laughs> that was the chic look then. And that's Patty Dunning, Reisinger, mm -hmm. uh, who is the, actually the star of the film. And Patty will be at, uh, I know she'll be at the Gertz House on Sunday the 22nd, and she'll also be at the Open Bible Church on Saturday the 21st. Great. But this film is, uh, the Lord has used it to touch people uh, even today. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to share with people uh, at, at some of the showings is some of the things that are happening today with this film that I would have said 40 years later, it's over, it's done. Right. It's, it's been wonderful, but for 40 years it's been doing it and it should, it's, it's probably outlived its usefulness. It's but the Lord has another, another thing to say about that. But uh, this, this film was a labor of love, and it has touched so many people. We, we get letters and phone calls from people all over the world who have said, I saw this and it was so significant in my life, it brought me to Jesus, it changed my life, I rededicated my life, it changed my walk. And uh, as a matter of fact, we heard at the office just yesterday, there's a man from Kansas City who said, uh, I'm coming to the showings. Who's going to be at the showings? Because I want to be sure they're there. I'm taking off a day of work Aww. to drive in from Kansas City, Missouri Aww. to see the film. I, I say that only because that's the kind of effect that the film has had on people. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And the series, can you talk a little bit more about the series that has come out of this film? Yes. This film starts virtually today. It starts in a world where people are going about their everyday business. Mm -hmm and some of them are in interested in the future and some are not in really interested, they just do their thing every day. But the film deals with the rapture of the church mm -hmm. and what happens in particular to Patty, who is one of the people who was left behind when the rapture occurs. And then the, the successive films deal with Patty dealing with what happens next. What does the scripture say is gonna happen after the rapture? And so you s that begins to be revealed in the next film and Patty starts to face some of these real challenges that people are gonna have. And then the third film goes even further. Are there people who are left over? Things are really getting bad in the third film. And by the time the fourth film comes along, God has opened heaven and all the judgments that God has, which are the, uh, the uh, seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and the bowl judgments that are all described in the book of Revelation that are poured out upon mankind. Mm -hmm. They're poured out for two different reasons. One, the first reason is so that man will recognize there is a God, he is almighty, and say, I need to surrender to him. Mm -hmm. And the second is a testing, a time of trouble for Israel, that Israel will be refined and finally will take their place in the world as the light that God originally chose them to be. So those are the things that happen in the tribulation, and our, our films deal with those. But in each film, we have a character who is sort of a main character that you can follow and identify with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it has been just incredibly successful. You know, I read somewhere that it, it has actually been documented that this film has been seen. Uh, this film has been seen by over 300 million people to date. That is just remarkable. It has been seen by over 300 million, and there are, are millions of salvations as a result of it that we know of from uh, screenings where people came forward and signed and said, I, I want to receive Christ. And we don't know how many people have seen it on cable, on God TV satellite, mm -hmm. on satellites in the Middle East, in homes, on DVD. We don't have any record of that. Mm -hmm. Or even as Chinapa Jacob did in India at one point, when they were in 16 millimeter, which we originally shot in, he would take them around on a motor scooter, oh. put up a sheet between trees, huh. and show them to people in the wilds of India. Wow. And he would sometimes say, well, I think there were, I think there was maybe 10 people at this place and mm -hmm. two people at this place, but we didn't have accurate records, so we just mm -hmm. have to guess. Sure. 
but we know that it's been very significant in many, many people's lives. Mm -hmm. And if you look here uh, behind uh, the, the, the crew, we have a full house this evening of folks that are waiting to come in and one, once again watch this film. Uh, well, Tom, thank you so much for joining us here on the Solmanad Show with Sonia. So, folks, we are just going to go ahead and transition so we can get the, these uh, individuals here into the auditorium so they can watch the film. We'll see you next week right here on the Solmanad Show with Sonia. So y'all remember, be blessed in whatever you put your hands to do. Until next time, ciao.